My name is Omar Klein, I'm working with Continuum. And today I want to talk about three ideas and a library called Flex, in which we use these three ideas, we combine them to create a pure Python GUI toolkit. Um, I actually want to start with a demo. Um, I made a small app, application, um, that shows weather data from the region where I live uh, for the, from uh, the past 60 years. And uh, there's a small slider over here that you can use to select the month. And there is a slider here which, which you can uh, set the, the smoothing to, to show the, the trends of the, of the data. And uh, this is just an example app. Uh, and uh, I quite like this app. And I, let's say that I want to share this with my friends. Um, so, so this, this is something that could be written in Qt, and if I want to share that with people, I can, uh, and these people are not very familiar with Python, I can use CX freeze to create a binary executable and email that to them, and, and that will work. Um, but what if I want to share this with the world? Then obviously that doesn't work, and you need to go to, uh, to the web, you need to make a web application. Um, but then I would have to re-implement my application in, uh, in JavaScript and HTML, and I don't really want to do that because I'm a Python programmer and um, I don't like JavaScript so much. Um, so what if there was a way to create an application once in Python and then being able to deploy it as a desktop application as well as a, a web application without changing any of the code? And, um, well, you can. So this is the exact same application uh, that's hosted by uh, an instance uh, on the M in the Amazon cloud. And you can see that it does exactly the same thing. Um, what's more is that um, I wrote this small application. Uh, I, I want to show the code at the end of the talk so that we can sort of understand what's, how it works. Um, but I wrote the application in a way that it um, doesn't really rely on the server, so all the Interaction is done on a client, um, and that means that I can export this application to a standalone HTML document. Um, so I can load this in the browser, and again, it's the same, the same thing. Um, so this wouldn't be, uh, of course, uh, Jupyter is a, a very popular tool, and a lot of people are using that. So I thought we should make it work there as well. So. Um, I can note this same example. Uh, I can import the example uh, over here. Is that readable? Is it? Maybe it increases a bit. So, and um, the GUI, to GUI toolkit, uh, Flex, it allows you to, to, to show widgets just by instantiating them, and they will appear uh, in the browser. And you can do the same with this uh, application, because an application is really just a widget or, com or compound widgets with, with uh, other widgets inside. So I can note this example in here, and well, obviously it does the same thing, but now it's tied to the Python process, and now we can interact with it. So I can, for instance, um, change the line width of the plot over here, and I can also uh, write some code to react to the changing of the slider and uh, update the color of the line so that every month is displayed in a different color, like this. Okay. I want to get back to my talk. Right, so the rest of this talk is basically on how, how we uh, can achieve this and what, what sort of the technologies we are using. And there's, at the start I said there's three main ideas and these are basically uh, a way to, to launch a web runtime that looks like a desktop application. Uh, one is a, another is a Python to JavaScript transpiler, so you can write Python uh, and output JavaScript, basically. And another is a system uh, for reactive programming, which is to say a, a mecha mechanism that allows you to define how different components of your application react to changes. Um, so sort of the event system of your application. And I don't have, really have enough time to, to cover all these things in detail, uh, so I'll, I'll just show them very briefly. Um, basically, the, this web runtime module um, has one function. The API consists of one function, and you pass it a, 
uh, URL and uh, oh sorry you pass it to URL and uh, and the kind of wrapper and time that you want to use. So I'm I'm using Zool now, which is uh, uh, basically available wherever Firefox is installed, and it allows you to create a, a an application that has a title, an icon that you specify. You can specify the size and all the things that you would expect to be able to specify for a desktop application. But really, underneath it is a browser, and um, you know you, we're talking it to it as if it is a browser. Um, the second component uh, that we're using is a Python to JavaScript transpiler. And there's a lot to say about this and, and why did we create yet another solution and how it compares to the existing Python to JavaScript solutions out there. Um, I, I'm just going to show you what it does. The main, the main function is uh, called py2.js. Uh, it's a function that accepts either a string of Python and it converts that string to the uh, corresponding JavaScript. Um, you can also specify, really write a function in Python and transpile that. So in this case, it is able to tell, you know, able to create something that looks very similar to the Python variant, but if we implement this using a, regu uh, a list comprehension, uh, you get something that works, but it's not really easy to read. Um, so basically, uh, a few more words about this PyScript. It's, it's a way to it's not really writing Python and executing that uh, as Python in the browser, but it's more like a way to write JavaScript um, with a Python syntax. However, we do apply quite a lot of um, uh, tweaks to make it more Pythonic. So for instance, an empty array, which is uh, evaluated to false, uh, to true in, in JavaScript, evaluates to true in, in, uh, in PyScript. So there's uh, quite a lot of tweaks that make it look more and more uh, like Python. And we, we, we also support all the built-ins, so you can use sorted and range and uh, any, any of the built-ins, uh, built-in Python functions. Okay. Um, so React uh, is a reactive programming uh, yeah, uh, f library, I, I suppose. Um, and reactive programming, uh, there, there's quite a lot of fuss about this, and uh, there are a lot of different implementations, and it's very hard to say what reactive programming really is. So this is one implementation in Python, um, but to really think about, uh, to, to know what it is, uh, you, you need a bit of a paradigm shift. And it's not very hard, but if you're used in, in thinking about callbacks, and this is uh, slightly different. Uh, so I want to go through this very briefly. And I plan to do a lightning talk about this to, to go uh, tomorrow to, to go into a bit more detail on, uh, on some of the advantages. But the basic idea is that you can uh, create signals, and these signals have a certain value. And uh, over here, we, and we do this um, by defining a function and using a decorator to turn that function uh, into a signal. Uh, so in this case, we're creating an input signal uh, so that is a signal that uh, you know is setable by the user. So now you see uh, name is not a function, but it's a signal. Then create an, another signal that's going to react to changes in the signal that we just made. So we, we're creating a greet function, um, and it's reacting to to the name signal, and it's reacting immediately because the, the name signal already had a, a default value. So if I change the value of the name signal to my name, it's going to greet, to greet me. One other thing that I want to mention um, is that you can connect to multiple upstream signals at the same time. So if I would have uh, a first name and last name signal, I can connect to them at the same time. And when either of these changes, uh, the, the greet function will be called. Um, well, there's more, more that I can tell about this, but there I have too, not enough time to to really go into all the details. So, so these are the three components. And um, I want to stress this, these components are really independent. And importing either of these will not import anything else. So if you just are interested in, in any of these, these uh, components, you can uh, just do so. Um, but wh where we want to go is to this uh, UI um, uh, module. and. Uh, there's one, one module in between, and that is the app module. And this is basically where we define a server, a main loop, and, um, and a special class that I call the pair class. 
so what this application module basically does is going to launch, well, if, if you want to uh, launch your desktop application, it's going to launch uh, a desktop application using this web runtime module, and then it's going to make a web socket connection with that, so you get a very tight connection between the JavaScript and the Python runtime uh, to communicate, uh, to make the com communication. Okay, thank you. Um, ah. So, the, um, the app module defines a special class called the pair class, and uh, this is a very central role on, on top of which we build all the widgets. So this is sort of the uh, important bit where the uh, uh, JavaScript, of Python to JavaScript translation, and the, uh, the idea of creating signals sort of come together. And what you can do with this pair class is that you cr can create a, a Python class, uh, which creates a Python object, but these Python objects will have a corresponding object in JavaScript. So for every Python object, there's one corresponding object in JavaScript. And there's a lot of uh, certain attributes will be synchronized between the two, and also all signals that you define on either the Python object or the JavaScript object will be synchronized. Um, and you can define what the JavaScript object will look like by creating a sort of a nested class called JS and uh, just defining stuff on there. So there you can define functions uh, and uh, also class attributes as long as they're JSON serializable. Um, and you can create signals. So in this little example, we're creating one input signal on the Python object. Uh, and on the JS object, we are going to react to changes in that signal. So, so remember, this, this, this will be interpre interpreted as um, as JavaScript, of transpiled to JavaScript. So we're going to trans um, react to this um, changes in the name signal by making a pop-up using alert. So if I instantiate this greeter and I uh, call it, you get, um, you, you get the alert. So this is basically where we, on top of which we uh, implement all the widgets. So for instance, for the, the button implementation is very simple, it just has a a text input signal, and of on the JavaScript side, we react to that text and we change the self.node.innerHTML is that value. Uh, and it will all be, uh, you know, it, it's a very simple way to develop these, these widgets. So, so that's for, that for the uh, UI. Uh, so the UI model itself, uh, there's, well, a handful of, of uh, widgets available now. It's obviously uh, not complete yet, but it's enough to make a few simple uh, applications. Um, yeah, so I will now want to take a very brief moment to, to look at the source code of this example. Um, so basically, there, there's uh, all the data is over here. Here is a bit of code. Is this maybe a bit small? Can I? Here's a bit of code that does the parsing of the data. And then in here, we just define all the widgets and how they are laid out. So um, th this is all in, in Python. And then here we have this JS object. And um, we, are, we are going to listen for changes in the uh, month, month slider and the smoothing slider. And when any of these change, we're going to do some updating of the plant. So we're going to select new, new data values from this, uh, from this data structure that we have, and we're going to do some smoothing uh, over here. So that's basically how it works. And because everything is implemented, I, I could have implemented this, this part, the selection of the data and, and the smoothing. I could have implemented that in Python, but then it would work on the server, and then um, you would always need a server to run this application. But because it's implemented in JavaScript, it's now possible to export it to, to standalone HTML. Um, yeah, so some final thoughts. So this is really an experimental thing. There's, uh, uh, I think some of the, the ideas are some of the, 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 the uh, Python to JavaScript transpilation and the rea uh, reactive programming library uh, can be useful uh, by themselves. How well this, this will all scale to a real uh, proper GUI library, 
I, I think it will work, but uh, we'll have to see. So it's in alpha status, but if you want to play with it, please do, because we're also looking, uh, very interested in hearing your feedback. Uh, and if you want to play with it, you can just uh, pip install it. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Hi, so this looks similar to uh, a Google Web, Web Toolkit uh, as a concept. Uh, Google Web Toolkit is, uh, is implemented in Java and it exposes Java code as a, as a JavaScript. But the, but the problem with, uh, uh, with this approach is usually that it's, it's very hard then to mix uh, this automatically generated uh, JavaScript code with some existing a JavaScript library. So, for example, in, 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 in your example application, imagine I would like to decorate your sliders with jQuery UI sliders. How, how hard would be this to implement? Um, I'm not really sure, but what I know about most of the existing solutions uh, to, to run Python in the browsers is that they sort of run into a virtual machine or that at least all the types are, are sort of boxed to make it really look like, like real Python. And because I sort of took a step back and, and made it uh, more like writing JavaScript with the Python syntax, it does interact. You can interact very easily with all existing libraries and stuff like that. Um, but re re you're, you're referring to React, and there you have this templating. Yeah, I, I'm not too familiar with React, so I, I would have to, to see how that works out. Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering, does the, uh, the fact that you translate a lot into JavaScript mean that you cannot use any, cannot import any modules or any other existing Python code because that would make it harder to turn it into JavaScript or is all that still possible? Um, yeah, so if I go back to this ex example, so th this, is, this will all be executed in Python except for really this bit. So, so this bit is defined, but it will, will not be executed in Python. So in here, you cannot do imports. But in here, you can do all the imports that you want to do. So, so all the, uh, this is executed on the, on the server, and you can do, you know, import anything you like. It's just only in the JS um, subclass. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks.